I really appreciate the response I've gotten on my first three videos on IndyCar rejects. For my fourth video, I took a look through all the comments I've gotten on YouTube and Reddit and found one driver who had more negative comments than anyone else. Hiro Matsushita is the most hated driver in my comment section, more so than Francisco Draconi, Dennis Vitolo, and even the racing dentist himself, Dr. Jack Miller. But how bad was he, and is he deserving of all this hate? Let's find out. Hiro Matsushita is the grandson of Kanusuke Matsushita, founder of Panasonic, and son of Masaharu Matsushita, who served as the second president of Panasonic. This allowed him to receive financial backing from Panasonic throughout his racing career. Hiro started out racing motorcycles in Japan. Reportedly, he won a Japanese motocross championship in 1980, although I couldn't find any information about his early career in Japan, perhaps because he hid his identity since his family didn't approve of his racing. Soon, Hiro moved to the U.S. and raced in Formula Ford in 1987, and then Formula Atlantic for 88 to 89. Atlantic's at the time was split between an East Coast and a West Coast series. Matsushita raced in the West Coast series, the less competitive of the two. In 1988, the series did feature several other drivers who would move on to Champ Car or IndyCar, including Dean Hall, who won the championship, and two part-time drivers, Johnny O'Connell, who would have one win in his three starts and move on to a successful sports car racing career, and Charles Nierberg. Let's just say he's a contender for worst IndyCar racer of the 90s. Hero would perform pretty well, finishing the year with one win and third in the championship. For 1989, the U.S. Atlantic's championship switched to Toyota 4AG Motors, with Toyota sponsoring the whole series, now known as Toyota Atlantics. Hero would finish the Pacific season with four wins, including Long Beach, a combined Pacific and Atlantic race, where he'd move up from fifth starting position to first, a pretty impressive win. He'd go on to win the championship. Hero's most notable competition this year was renowned carter Mark Dismore, who would go on to win the 1990 West Coast Formula Atlantic Championship. For 1990, Hero would move up to IndyCar with Dick Simon Racing. He would have a long but rather unremarkable career, making 117 starts from 1990 to 1998. He would have mostly mid-pack equipment for most of his career, his best chances perhaps coming in 1993, racing for Derek Walker in the T93 Lola with the Cosworth XB, the same package Nigel Mansell would take to the championship that year. His last two years, he'd be straddled with a still-developing Toyota engine package, which was walled down on power. Matsushita managed to finish in the top 10 only seven times, with a best finish of sixth. I rewatched several races from his career, but he was so unremarkable, he rarely got any airtime on the race broadcasts. Like all mid-pack to backmarker drivers, Hero would often only make the broadcast when he crashed. And in his career, he had some bad ones. In 1992, he had a brutal crash at any practice where he'd literally break his leg. Another brutal crash came at Phoenix in 1994, where Hiro would touch wheels with Teo Fabi in a rather typical racing incident. Then, after what felt like an eternity, a young Jacques Villeneuve apparently missed a yellow flag and crashed head-on into a stationary Matsushita. Miraculously, everyone would walk away from the crash. But perhaps Hiro would become most famous not for his crashes, but in causing difficulties while getting lapped. This would earn him the nickname King Hero, as confirmed by Emerson Fittipaldi in his race engineer Chuck Sprague on the Marshall Pruitt podcast, the nickname came about when Hero got in the way while Fittipaldi was attempting to lap him. Fittipaldi got on the radio to complain with a choice expletive, but due to radio lag, it sounded to the team that Emmo was complaining about King Hero. The term would become an inside joke for the Penske team, and eventually the media got wind of it, and the term became a bit of a meme in the IndyCar fan base. 
Today, you can actually buy a King Hero t-shirt, and there's even an IndyCar podcast named after the term. So, where does Hiro Matsushita rank among the worst IndyCar racers of all time? In terms of his performance, I had to find some data. Race results don't tell the full story, especially in an era where there was less parity between the fastest and slowest cars and much worse reliability compared to today. It's hard to find practice times or race lap times from the 90s, but by watching the start of race broadcasts, which sometimes show qualifying times, I was able to compare lap times for Hero versus teammate for a few dozen races. I looked at races from early and late in Hero's career. It's a small sample size and not conclusive, but I was able to see a few things. For sure, Hero underperformed his teammates on raw pace. I couldn't find a single race where he outqualified a teammate. Although he generally seemed to have better pace on natural terrain road courses and super speedways versus temporary street circuits and short ovals, even on a good day, he could only pull within a few tenths of his teammate, and more often than not, he was seconds off the pace on road and street courses or 10 miles an hour off on an oval. Perhaps most disappointing, there was no real sign of improvement from 1993 to 1997. So while he clearly underperformed and was perhaps the quintessential ride buyer of his era, I still don't think he's in contention for the title of worst driver. As Pacific Toyota Atlantic champion, he was pretty well qualified prior to injuring IndyCar. And while his IndyCar results were lackluster and performance very inconsistent, he at least showed at times he was able to run decently competitive compared to his teammate, something at least a few backmarkers of the time could not do. Also, although he became famous for being a moving chicane and getting in the way of the leaders, I don't see evidence that he was any worse to lap than other backmarkers, which notable motorsports journalist Marshall Pruitt Emerson Fittipaldi himself and his engineer support in the podcast on the origins of the term King Hero. But in my mind, I'm still wondering, why did the Formula Atlantic champion never produce results in IndyCar? After all, many great IndyCar and F1 drivers raced in the Formula. So what went wrong? I don't know, but here are some thoughts. First off, Although I think his Atlantic Championship qualified him for a shot at IndyCar, the feeder series back then was not as competitive. Although the fields were sometimes very large, like in the 1989 Long Beach Atlantic's race Hero One, there was a wider discrepancy in both driver skill and equipment. This is apparent from watching the race, where we see less close racing and Hero easily making a pass for the lead with no defense put up by leader Jaco Cunningham. Indeed, Atlantic Series champions during the time are very hit or miss when it comes to success in IndyCar. None from the late 80s or early 90s made a lasting mark in IndyCar. Hero is unusual in that he had the sponsorship to keep himself going for eight years, Otherwise, he would have found himself out of a ride fast. Overall, I think results in feeder series back then were a lot less predictive of success in IndyCar compared to today. Additionally, a 1996 article in the LA Times which interviewed Hero provides an interesting viewpoint. The early 90s were pretty brutal compared to today in terms of driver injuries, and as mentioned, Hero had some bad crashes. He broke his leg in a practice crash for the first race of the season in 1992, then broke his other leg in his Indy practice crash a few months later. After basically escaping death and severe injury after getting speared by Villeneuve in 1994, could Hero have lost his drive? In the article, Hero is quoted admitting the crashes affected him for years, but saying he finally felt better and back to himself for 1996. Hero would retire abruptly in the middle of the 1998 season, handing his ride over to Robbie Gordon. He would dabble in some other forms of racing for a few years, notably sports cars and off-road racing, but would be out of the sport as a driver by the early 2000s.
However, he would remain involved in racing through his company, Swift Engineering. Hero purchased the race car manufacturer in the early 90s, which built the Formula Atlantic cars he raced in the 80s and some of the champ cars he raced against in the 90s, but interestingly, never drove himself. Swift would continue to develop race cars, including several new Formula Atlantic cars and the spec Formula Nippon car used from 2009 to 2013. When IndyCar was accepting bids for the new IndyCar chassis for the 2012 season, Swift also developed what I thought was the coolest looking prototype for the new IndyCar among all the bids, but lost out to Delara, who continues to build the DW12 for IndyCar today. More recently, Swift Engineering has shifted to the aerospace business, and Hero continues to own and run the company. Although he never produced good results in IndyCar, Hiro was the first Japanese driver to make a career in the U.S., paving the way for other Japanese drivers. Previously, Japanese drivers had focused in Europe. After Hiro moved to IndyCar in 1990, 11 other Japanese drivers to date have made starts in IndyCar or Champ Car, some moving over after trying Formula One, others making the move earlier in their career to focus on IndyCar. Hiro has also helped some of these drivers' careers through his marketing company, Pacific Marketing. Overall, my opinion is Hiro Matsushita was a mediocre IndyCar driver, not the worst, but one who received and continues to receive a disproportionate amount of criticism. So that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know who you think was the worst driver of the 90s in the comments, and maybe my next video will be on that driver. So see you then.